Hello, it's Gil Rogers, and this is the next in our series of programs on Let's Go Farming. And in this part, we're going to be meeting and talking with some of the local restaurants that emphasize the use of local agriculture, local farms in their menu and uh, for providing uh, excellent food. And today we have the pleasure of meeting with Josh Foley, who is the co-owner of Avenue, which is right in downtown Medfield. And he and his wife um, were involved in a great deal of restoration of, this is a famous old building, the Ord Building, and um, the restaurant's been open for a relatively short period of time. But Josh, welcome, first of all, to Medfield, and welcome to this show. Thanks so much. We Happy appreciate it. And uh, maybe to start out, just say a little bit about how you decided to, to move to Medfield. A realtor suggested Medfield, and we couldn't be happier here. 11 years later, four kids in the school system, great community. And uh, we saw an opening for a restaurant here. And as we, we were two working parents trying to find uh, time to cook and or go out to eat or get some takeout, there, was, there weren't enough options. And, Luckily, my investors and the bank and everybody kind of agreed that this was an underserved, um, affluent community. This was, in their mind, going to be um, a signature kind of project for them, mm -hmm. um, restoring this, and I think they did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. um, so we started dialogue with them, and believe it or not, it's nearly two years ago. It was a long process, but I think it was well worth it. The, the location's tremendous, mm -hmm. a lot of visibility. Um, I think the Brothers Market across the street is a, is a good indicator of um, the zip code and the strength of it, not just Medfield, but the surrounding towns. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the size of it. There's 115 seats here, which includes uh, bar stools. Uh, so that is equal parts profitable and manageable. Mm -hmm. I know it's not too small, not too big. Um, so really it was about the location, just the, the look of the space. Uh, there's 10 huge windows over there. There's a lot of visibility. We, we designed the open kitchen so you could feature the uh, brick oven in the custom wood grill. And so I think we took a unique approach to our concept in a really beautiful location. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing a lot of interest in local agriculture, local produce, not just vegetables and fruit, but meat, uh, poultry. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a, a a growing trend and uh, maybe across the country but certainly around here absolutely and can you just say a little bit about kind of how you have taken that idea that concept and incorporated into the absolutely. restaurant I think I've been fortunate to work where I've worked and who I've worked with so these kind of philosophies that yeah they're popular now they've been around for a long time the Zuni cafe certainly we used to have uh, you know the farmer would pick up um, <laughs> compost every night at midnight and then we'd in turn turn around and buy pigs from that farmer as an example so sort of a full circle thing excellent every place I've worked has pretty much to some degree had that as a core philosophy and we're certainly we're certainly doing that here mm -hmm. have you s developed relationships now with specific sources specific farms in the area or yeah how so locally here? tangerine um, you know, it's been a little bit tough for them this year with the drought. Right. But um, certainly they're right down the street, so that's a, that's a no-brainer. And then uh, Northeast Family Farms does a lot of proteins, and we've definitely gotten some pork and chicken from them. Um, I'm always open to trying anything anybody wants to show me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we're buying um, local, but also we're taking into consideration quality obviously is a priority rank, and, uh, and cost is in there too, but uh, mostly, mostly it's about quality. Do you, do you find that the customer base is particularly interested and particularly attracted to the idea that you're buying local? I do. I think that that is, I don't know if it's because of um, the Food Network or, you know, it's become, uh, people are really much more in tune with what they're eating. I yeah. buy, as an example, even if it's not local, all of our proteins are all natural. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I do find that people want to know where their food's from. Now it must pose sort of a challenge too because when you're buying local, right, you're subject to the weather. You mentioned the mm. drought we're having. Um, you know, it's what the local farms can produce. 
That's and, right. that, and, and that's not highly predictable. You have to react to it, I, I suppose, respond to it almost on a week by week or short term basis. Absolutely. No, it is. And uh, my suppliers are great about letting me know what's, what's going on in the market, what looks great, what looks you know, maybe not so great, so that we can make different decisions. Mm -hmm. And react in the menu, so you have to respond in terms of what you're going to put on the menu for that day? Or Yeah. If there's a signature dish, it's probably our um, slow roasted chicken. And mm -hmm. in the description, I wrote um, blistered stone fruit so that I can go with plums one week or peaches, and it could be really any stone fruit. So I think in the way that you describe things can give you some flexibility. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great. Um, one thing that we're interested in trying to get across in, the, in this uh, show is how is it contributing, in a sense, to the education? Well, I mean, you are what you eat. I've got four kids. They go grocery shopping with me, and we look at labels, and it's important to know what you're eating is, I, I think, important that it, you know, it's clean yeah. and wholesome, and if it's local, all the better. And the kids are getting... You know, you get kids in, at different levels in the Medfield schools, so they're probably getting exposed to some of the things that the Medfield schools are doing in terms of uh, local farms and the Victory Garden and, yep. uh, you know, buying local produce and putting it in the cooking programs at the schools. They do a great job with that. And my, all my kids have, have kind of told me stories about their experiences, yeah. and um, it's, it's, a great, it's a great school system. They're doing a good job. Yeah. Have there been other insights you gained that you've been able to apply here? We always try and use the right tool for the right task, staying clean and organized, uh, and then experimenting. You know, so we do a lot of traditional cooking around here, but also I'm not afraid to try out some new ideas. If anybody, any one of my cooks has an idea they want to try out, yeah, we're going to try it out, and that's fun for them. You have a couple of very interesting um, uh, rotisserie and ovens. Can you say a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, well, I have a crush on my grill. I love it. It's, uh, it was custom made in California, a small company called NorCal. Um, it's 64 inches, double sided, and it has wheels on the outside where you can raise and lower your, your wood fire. Right now, as we speak, we're roasting chickens, so the fire's down low. Um, and about two hours from now, I'll take those chickens off the fire. Um, stoke it up so that it's hot, which means I'll have three to five logs burning on each side. So when we open at five o'clock, I can do wood-fired steak frites, wood-fired local tuna, um, mm -hmm. wood-fired all-natural Angus burgers, mm -hmm. and also a lot of, um, we, we grill bread, we grill veggies, we grill fruit, like I said, the stone fruit for the chicken, and all that, um, a lot of stuff comes off that wood grill. Mm -hmm. and you can actually smell it outside too, which was one of my favorite. So Parts when people are walking <laughs> in the sidewalk here, they, they yes. smell that and that draws them in. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so. I, I, uh, it's funny, I actually, we live four minutes on foot from here, and uh -huh. I can smell the grill from my house. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, that is one of, our, um, one of our signature pieces in the kitchen, and you can see it too from the dining room, which is nice. Um, also, there's a, there's a brick oven. And currently in the brick oven, we're doing... Uh, flatbreads and uh, chicken wings. And uh, we're also doing some specials out of that wood oven sometimes, a baked pasta dish, um, things like that. So the net is also very visible from the dining room, which is, I think, important. Mm -hmm. um, kind of in summary, how, how have you seen the reaction in terms of the acceptance of um, Avenue here in Medfield? Tremendous. Uh, we've been very busy. We've gotten a lot of feedback, mostly positive and uh, some things uh, to work on for sure, as any startup in probably any business, we right. have a punch list of things to work on. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a great mix of staff with um, every, everywhere from a lot of experience to nearly none. And so we're doing a lot of teaching around here, um, which is one of my favorite things to do anyway. So, so far, so good. It's a good start. Where do you see the restaurant in a year or two from now? One thing we might add is a Sunday or weekend brunch. Mm -hmm. uh, my operations manager, uh, Corey Camo, used to be the executive chef at Stephanie's on Newberry. Yeah. They have a tremendous brunch, so that's sort of in our wheelhouse. I could see adding that. Also, uh, we've talked about the idea 
of adding an outdoor patio, which should definitely be growth. Um, those two, those two areas. Uh, we've got a semi-private dining room in the back, which mm -hmm. we've booked only a couple of parties so far, and I think that um, that is something unique to the area, and I think there's a need for. Um, and really, it's just about uh, bring, bringing our best effort every day and just trying to be, just trying to get better. Mm -hmm. Well, the reaction I've heard has been fantastic to the restaurant. That mm -hmm. it really is a big addition. Really fills in a need here in in the uh, in the area. So yeah, this sounds good. Congratulations and Thank best you. of luck. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks very much, Josh. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks. restaurant in Sherbourne, the old Sherbourne Inn, and we're talking with Josh and Jen Ziskin, the co-owners that bought the uh, inn about a year ago. And one of the purposes is to talk a little bit about the value of local farming, local agriculture to a restaurant. Thanks a lot for joining sure, us. Sure, of course, <laughs> I yeah. appreciate the time. Yeah, my pleasure, of course. And um, maybe just to kick it off, Josh, maybe you could just say a little bit about um, your background in uh, getting into restaurants and a little bit about your very successful La Mora restaurant down in Brooklyn. Okay, so I started working in restaurants when I was 15 years old. Wow. So, uh, you know, worked my way up, decided to go to college, got a degree at University of Denver, hotel and restaurant management, mm -hmm. and then worked for different chefs in Boston, uh, you know, working my way up to sous chef, and then uh, went to Italy for six months, worked for a restaurant, and then uh, came back and was the sous chef at the Tuscan Grill in Waltham, which is no right. longer. Right. And then uh, we opened La Mora restaurant in Brookline. Now, what motivated you to come out to Sherborne, out into the suburbs after being more in the downtown area? Uh, we just had come here for dinner before and sort of fell in love with the space and we were getting more into catering. Right. So we thought this would be a great um, opportunity to sort of do what we did well at the time, which was catering and, and running a restaurant. There seems to be a, you know, a, an important trend or direction into farm to table and yep. using local farms in the area. I've been working for restaurants or owning restaurants that have used the farm to table method before it was called farm to table. Just sort of a normal way of course for us was buying locally, using fresh produce, um, or fresh poultry or fresh meat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just sort of was natural. That's how I grew up working in restaurants. It's, a lot, it's, a lot, it's more difficult working with local farms uh, because they don't have a consistent product. It's not going to a grocery store where you know they're always gonna have tomatoes, they're always gonna have lettuce. Right. You know, they could have a, a drought like we're experiencing this summer where a lot of their products aren't coming up. So the consistency isn't there. So you have to be creative with mm -hmm. your menu and constantly changing your menu. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the challenges, but I think it's a good challenge and sort of, we'll just get a bunch of stuff and get motivated by it and put it on the menu so somehow. So you have to be more innovative than almost on a real time sure, basis. Of huh? course, of course, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, you know, if the farm has, you know, 200 pounds of tomatoes and they're selling them cheap or whatever, they're trying to get rid of them. So we try to help them out and we'll, do a tomato focused menu or do a bunch of specials, so. Do you work with a number of different farms? Or? We do about four or five produce farms. Silverwood Farm right. here in Sherborne. We use uh, Wardsbury Farm in Sharon. Mm -hmm. We use um, Allendale in Brookline. Sure. We use Hope Still. All right, you've been here for a year roughly now. Yep. As a result of your taking over the restaurant, um, having uh, some changes in the menu, bringing local farm and local agriculture to the customer base. Mm -hmm. How have you seen the customers react to that? I don't have much face time with the customers. They sort of keep me in the back, you know, they don't let me out too much. <laughs> but I think a lot of people appreciate it. Some people don't realize that we're, uh, you know, supporting a lot of local farms, mm -hmm. but I think they, they taste the benefit. Are you getting into other things beyond vegetables too, uh, meats for example, poultry? We, yeah, we'll do some meats, you know, around Thanksgiving we get turkeys locally, uh, 
And then we have gotten whole pigs before, and we've definitely gotten lambs um, mm -hmm. locally in Sherbourne. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've definitely done that. That's a little more challenging because the way they are processed and frozen usually. Mm -hmm. So you either have to buy a whole animal or you have to buy frozen. So when we have a special dinner, or figure out a way to use it. We, mm -hmm. we, do, we do do that. How do you see this whole thing evolving and changing? I don't really see how it would change. I just think it's sort of gone back to the way things used to be done, yeah. where you bought locally. Yeah. Uh, you know, where you went to the the dairy guy for your your milk. You went to the the, the produce guy, the fish guy. So I think that's how we do it anyway, mm -hmm. and that's how they do it uh, a lot in Europe. So you're mm -hmm. not just buying from a conglomerate everything. We'd love to grow some of our own stuff. We have a a, a little bit of property here where we could feel like we could do uh, some of our own stuff, but that's mm -hmm. another challenge and another mm -hmm. you know. Um, another workload that we would have to another have. another business. I mean, you'd have right, to have somebody right. to run it. And, yeah, I have a friend who has a restaurant, and they grow a lot of their own produce and yeah. raise their own pigs. And he says there's no real cost benefit, but just the end product is always great. You know, right? So yeah. Um, how else do you see it benefiting the community? This um, idea of local agriculture. You know, the the footprint, the the the, the carbon footprint on it is 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 less. You know, like right. I'll go to a place or they'll deliver, and uh, yeah. you know, it's not getting shipped from California or Mexico. Right. Uh, you know, it's coming from within a, a ten mile radius, so it's it's sort of nice, and I think that benefits everybody. You know, right. and I think I just the, the the customer benefits from the the great quality of everything that we get. Well, thanks so much. You're we welcome. really appreciate your My comments pleasure. and we're My glad pleasure. you're here. And Thank you. Thank we were you. here last night and enjoyed the restaurant. Uh, good, good, we'll be great. be back again soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, we now have the opportunity to talk with Jen Ziskin. Jen, you're the executive director here, right? Mm -hmm. And you're yes. focused more on the, on the business and marketing and the growth. But maybe before we get into that, maybe you could just say a little bit about your own background. Sure. Um, so I've been in the restaurant business since I was 15, um, wow. like Josh as well, bussing tables, serving, um, all aspects of the restaurant business. Josh and I lived in Italy right after we got married, and we lived on a vineyard, and he worked um, in a restaurant there. And we went, you know, solely so he could learn and be exposed to more, um, you know, hands-on Italian cooking while we were there. Right. Um, but while we were there, I developed a really great interest in wine as well. I worked for a family, I nannied for a family. Um, on a vineyard and so I really learned a lot about the wine business mm -hmm. so that really is a, a huge part of my focus and now I'm expanding because here we have wines from all over the world mm -hmm. so I'm expanding my knowledge trying to study and learn more and I'm going to Portugal this fall to have some hands-on training as well excellent great we see this trend mm -hmm. toward local agriculture mm -hmm. why is that sort of important not just in this area but across the whole country actually. I mean I think that people love having a personal connection. I also think um, you know just you want to cut down and be more energy efficient and I think that's a huge driving force as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know the less you need to kind of use transportation and flying things in. Yes. So you see a lot of um, you know uh, people that are mm -hmm. coming in that have come here probably for years mm -hmm. before you know, when it was a Sherborne Inn. And yes. What's been their reaction to the uh, more emphasis on local agriculture mm -hmm. and local produce? And uh, local I think they produce. love seeing it. And again, right. I just think it's like the knowing people, knowing Douse Orchard right down the street where we get a lot of our produce, exactly. our apples. Um, I just think those connections have been really well received here. Mm -hmm. um, they love the farm to table concept. You know, we call it like farm inspired cuisine. Is it important to differentiate between organic local mm -hmm. and versus just local um, agriculture? Yeah, that is, I mean, that, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure if it really, I think some people do really hunt out organic um, food and wine and mm -hmm. whatnot, but um, I don't necessarily know that that's like the driving force to, mm -hmm. to being local. Local's more important, you exactly. would say. The local I think so. than yep. the organic. Yes. Now, now you bought the, the whole inn, right? Yes, so crazy. it's it's a restaurant <laughs> but it's also uh, an old inn that's yep. been here for a long time. Yes. I know, it's quite an endeavor. I mean it has like so many different aspects to it. It's a wedding venue. Yeah. Um, we have like five private dining rooms. We do lots of private parties, birthday parties, weddings. Um, we have the store, we have a coffee shop in the morning, mm -hmm. we have the four rooms upstairs, mm -hmm. patio, lawn, I mean it's just so many different aspects. Yeah, so, so that's a complicated, I mean you're, you're the business manager, <laughs> right. I mean you're dealing with a lot of different businesses really. Exactly. Multiple businesses. Yep. 
Um, so you've had a year's experience mm -hmm. on this. What lessons have you learned about this? And if you were going to make changes, how would you change it? Uh, well, I'm really anxious to open the kind of the fine dining piece um, that we're going to do. Eventually, we really do want to do like a farm inspired tasting menu and kind of mm. a smaller a la carte menu in the this beautiful fine dining room as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that, um, you know, the community is so welcoming to all kinds of different events and activities that we're doing, whether it's wine dinners, trivia night. Um, now we have live music on Wednesday nights. Um, we have a farm dinner. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, every Thursday in August, we're doing a farm dinner. Mm -hmm. That I think just keeping up with doing a lot of events, um, being really present on social media is um, sort of the lesson, the biggest lessons I've learned that just to have more of a pre presence in the community is important. Mm -hmm. And a variety of things, I guess, mm -hmm. to to bring the community in. Exactly. Not just to eat, but for other right. things, too. Exactly. And You're going to have dancing? Uh, yeah, we actually have a band coming next week, and I think they're a huge dance. They're called um, Group Therapy. Where do you see uh, Heritage Restaurant in, in five years from now? Um, really having more of like a staycation type place where with the four rooms, people can come, spend a weekend, come to a wine dinner, stay overnight, trying to incorporate some really fun dining and staying activities. Excellent. And, um, and just further growing our catering business and our wedding business and just the, the regular nightly, daily activities. Great. Well, thanks so much. Thank appreciate you. appreciate your time and your comments. My and pleasure. Inviting us out here. No, thanks for coming. Thank nice you. to meet you. Well, hello, it's Gil Rogers. We're out in West Concord at a farm to table restaurant, Woods Hill Table. And with me today is uh, Kristen Cathy, who's the owner of Woods Hill uh, Table. And we're gonna discuss the benefits and the features of farm to table restaurants. So Kathy, maybe you could kick us off here and say a little bit about what is farm to table? Here at Woodsville Table, we have our own farm, so we're very lucky as a restaurant. Um, we have a 260-acre farm in Bath, New Hampshire, where we wow. are raising all of the animals that we serve at this restaurant. They're all pa rotationally pastured, so our animals don't see the inside of the barn except for when they're babies and they need the heat. The animals that need grain get 100% certified organic grain. We're serving organic meat or rotationally pastured meat wild fish. Our grain is from Four Star Farms in Massachusetts. Our uh, seafood, our shellfish are all from New England waters. Our vegetables are unsprayed. For us, it's getting, it's getting meat and the vegetables from local farms and serving it here. How did you first have this idea of, of putting a uh, farm to table restaurant right here in West Concord? When my son was three years old, he was allergic to the world, grass, dust, bees, every kind of pollen, and I found out that kids that grew up on farms don't have as many allergies as those that don't. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, that unpasteurized milk could um, actually pr prevent allergies and perhaps even cure them. I gave my son raw milk and he was completely healed of all of his allergies. I was in a dairy buying club, a meat buying club, and a vegetable buying club where I bought directly from farmers mm -hmm. and taught people how to source these products and then how to prepare these products. Um, and everybody always asked me to cook for them because it's, it's very hard in our suburban drive around town lifestyle to go back to this um, th you know, throwback way of cooking where you make everything from scratch and you soak your grains and you, um, you, know, you have to cut up your own meat and, you, and go, find, go find chicken from the farmers, not just buy it from the grocery store. So a lot of people were asking me to cook for them and that slowly became just opening up a restaurant where we prepare these foods for the for the guests. Now the restaurant's been open for how many years now? We opened in March of 2015. What have you found about the response to this restaurant versus conventional restaurants? I have to say that this restaurant is packed, jam-packed every single solitary night. So it's been a good response. I've just started marketing. I didn't do much marketing before, hmm. just a couple months ago, and it's really grown by word of mouth. 
We don't put the firm names on the menu. You know, this way of eating is very important to me, but I didn't want to impose that onto other people. And a lot of people don't know. A lot of people just think, you know, just know that they're eating delicious food. But when they know how fresh and how carefully sourced and how thoughtful everything is prepared, then those customers are very regular customers and I have a customer for life. So. Right. Now, in addition to your firm in uh, Bath, New Hampshire, you also work with a number of local farms in the area. How does that, how does that work? Oh, it's great. Um, farmers just walk in here with bushels of vegetables and unique things. A lot of them have unique things that they've grown just for us, just such as Clark Farm. Andrew um, grew Saltus just for us. And farmers have told me that it's made such a difference. First of all, you know, we love to have the relationship because it's such a, you know, it's such a community. It's so nice because they come here to eat dinner and they're eating their own vegetables, which is great. Um, they can, you know, we can thank them and they can appreciate how we've, how chefs prepared it. Uh -huh. um, and they've also told me that it's helped to grow their farms. It's created jobs. Uh -uh. Um, you know, it's helped them financially and that's what this restaurant is all about. And that yeah. just makes us really happy here. Now, it must take um, a lot of coordination, though, because at a local farm here, they'll have certain produce that's, uh, that's in season, and yet you have to sort of organize that around the menu you're going to have for, you know, that day or that weekend. It's not easy. You know, we love what we do here, yeah. um, but when we have 200 guests coming in the door and the farmers, because they harvest later in the afternoon, can't walk in with, you know, a, a huge thing of rutabaga, you know, and he has to, <laughs> they have to figure out what to do with it. And it's part of the fun of it, but it's a lot of work, as uh -huh. anyone can imagine. As anyone who, um, if you, when you go home with that big huge box from your CSA and you don't know what to do with things and you have to kind of figure it out quickly, right. that's what happens here every day on a much bigger scale. Does the, your, your chef... Charlie Foster. Yeah. Yes. Is he in communication with the local farmers then? Or is um, it just sort of, they come <laughs> in, they bring in these baskets and... A little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both. So he doesn't have a lot of advanced... Um, Sometimes, not other times, yeah. No, really, they just walk in and they're like, look, this is what we have. Uh-huh, so, great. Um, yeah. Have you found that there's been growth in farm to table? Chefs love to cook with the freshest food. You know, when they have the freshest food, they're gonna create the best product. So, you know, chefs love to get food from farmers. I don't know of any restaurants doing it on the scale that we are doing it. Everything here is from scratch. Everything here is from our local farmers. You know, we're, we're doing it at a very large scale. Now, one of the things I'd like to have you talk a little bit about is I watched your uh, movie, Farmageddon, mm -hmm. and it was uh, particularly a, an important statement about the, you know, the role and the viability of small farms, and yet the pressure that they're under and have been under from large agriculture, large industrial agriculture, and even the government. And this was done four years ago, roughly. What's um, sort of what was your experience? What's happened since then, and where is it going to go? Farmageddon is about the government interference with farm-to-consumer relations. It's specifically, um, they were turning, they would raid farmers at gunpoint um, over um, raw milk sales or uh, meat sales directed to the consumer. For individuals, I know it makes a difference. Some people say that they. Um, started just buying from farmers. Some people start buying raw milk because you know they want their dollars to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Some people say they never want to touch raw milk in their life, but at least they go to the farmers market now. Um, so for many individuals, I know that it's made a difference in that area, and that was my hope was that it would raise the demand for this food, and then mm -hmm. then the government has no choice but mm -hmm. to allow this farm to consumer relationship because mm -hmm. um, there's such a high demand. Um, as far as raids on farms, there's still been raids on farms. My farmer is, uh, one of my farmers is under government siege right now. He had a big inspection this morning by the USDA um, and because he's doing um, milk and meat, meat sales directly to consumers um, with no distributor interference and slaughtering the meat on their, his farm and selling it to consumers. The consumers want that. They've been to the farm. They know how he slaughters. Um, and so that's a conversation that's still that's still happening. And mm -hmm. so what I'm hoping comes out of this this raid, because it seemed to be there was an inspection this morning, it seemed to be friendly, um, is that there's more of a conversation. There's more of um, not a government shutdown, but rather a conversation about how how we can do this safely and how 
the farmers can get their product to consumers without raids mm -hmm. with guns. I know that a lot of younger people are very interested in farming now. Um, woofing is a big thing. Um, you know, working on an organic farm for college students and high school students, that's, a, that's making a trend. But I'll tell you, every single one of the um, farms in my movie that were raided, they're all gone. Every really? single one of them disappeared. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. the government, government and government policy make it very, very difficult for the small guy to survive. Um, and if you want to be organic, you know, I, I said this in the movie, um, if you want to just prove that you're growing your vegetables in dirt and water and nothing else, you have to fill out paperwork that's this thick right. every year and pay the government money. But as soon as you decide to spray one chemical, you're completely exempt from the paperwork. Right. And, you know, I think it should be the opposite. I mean, my staff tells me that they feel healthier from eating this food. Our guests say that, um, you know, the ones that eat here all the time say that they just feel extra healthy. Um, and many of them say that they won't eat anywhere else now that they know how our food is prepared, they know everything's from scratch, they know that we use all good fats mm -hmm. to cook their food. Um, so it's making our guests healthier and then it's making the farms healthier by, like I said, creating jobs and giving money directly to the farms. So mm -hmm. it's just a nice little circle that's, that's a lot of fun. Bedfield's not that far away from Concord, so if you <laughs> want to come visit Woodsell Table. Oh, no, well, uh, we've enjoyed <laughs> having dinner here a couple of times, and yeah. it's an excellent restaurant. Oh, good, thank you. Kristen, thanks so much. Thank we you. Really appreciate it. Good comments. Thank you very much. Medfield TV.